Okay, in this last uh, video, I'd like to show you, I'd like to run through four more examples of uh, optimization problems. I'm going to go pretty quickly, so you may have to pause it a cu couple of times. Okay, here we have a, we want to know um, what point on the graph of y equals x squared is closest to the point 0, 2. So what we're trying to do is minimize the dis distance from a point on the graph to the point 0, 2. Now you know there's actually two answers to this, because if x, y is a point, then isn't negative x, y going to be a point also? So we're going we're to find this point in the first quadrant, and then we're going to use symmetry to say there's also a point in the second quadrant whose distance is also the same, minimum. All right, so the function that's going to be op optimized here, or in this case mini minimized, would be the uh, distance function, which says it's the square root of x minus 0 squared plus y minus 2 squared. The constraint equation becomes the function itself, y equals x squared. So when you plug in for y, when you plug in um, x squared, you get this. Now, furthermore, the reason why I chose the closed interval 0 to 2 is because I, I mentioned we're looking in the first quadrant. x can be 0. If x equals 0, then the distance, I think, is 2. But notice, when x equals 2, y is 4. That's a point up here somewhere. It's obvious from the picture, when x is 2 and y is 4, that the minimum distance occurs before that. Okay? So I'm, I'm going to say it's a closed interval 0 to 2 because I like working with closed intervals because they're easier, aren't they? Speaking of which, I'm going to also let capital D be the square of little d. Now, I'm not saying they're the same. In fact, they're not. But what I'm saying is that wherever little d has a minimum value, suppose this is d, little d right here, capital D might be the square of it. It might look a little different. D might be here. But all I'm saying is the minimum of little d occurs at the same place where the minimum of big d occurs. So that's another little thing you can do. And you're, you're welcome to do that. Uh, whenever, you, whenever your function has a square root in it, you can always take the square of it as long as, long as you're caref careful about it. Anyway, so this is the function that I'm going to uh, find the minimum of uh, by the closed interval method. I take the derivative and I uh, simplify it, set it equal to zero, and you have zero, x equals zero or plus or minus radical three over two. But remember, I'm only in the first quadrant here, so the only critical number that I'm interested in is, is radical three over two. Then by the closed interval method, all you have to do now is, uh, is uh, find d of the left endpoint, d of the right endpoint, and d of the critical number. The absolute minimum turns out to be d of the crit critical number. And the answer to the question is, what are the points? Well, the points are going to be um, plus or minus square root of 3 over 2 and 3 halves by, by symmetry. There's one in the second quadrant. So let's do another one. Here's one where we have, um, we want to minimize the, uh, the cost of the can. We're, we're given that this can is going to be a closed can and the volume is fixed, 100 cubic centimeters. And the top costs uh, half a dollar per, uh, or 50 cents per square centimeter and the, and the side costs 10 cents per uh, square centimeter. So the function that we want to minimize is the cost function. So the cost of the top is equal to the area, the, I should say the cost of the top and bottom, is equal to the area of the top and bottom, which is pi r squared plus pi r squared, 2 pi r squared, times the cost per unit area, uh, cost per square centimeter. So it's 50 cents, we're going to call that one, one half dollar. So we multiply half a dollar times the area of the top and bottom. And the, the, the area of the side is 2 pi r h, that, that's the surface area of the side of a can. And since it's 10, 10 cents per square centimeter, we multiply by, by one tenth. So when you, when you simplify, we get this. This, this. Again, this is the function that we're trying to find the minimum of. Now, uh, the constraint equation is the volume. That's how it's going to be fixed. So you can solve this for h, and then uh, you can plug in the uh, cost function for h. You plug it in right here and simplify it. Now, the reason why you get the um, open interval 0 to infinity is because it, r cannot be 0. Well, you can see that from here. If r is 0, it's, it's unde undefined. But there is no biggest value of r either. So we're going to have to use the first derivative test to find the um, local minimum. You take the derivative of c, you get this. Uh, set it equal to 0 is when the numerator equals 0. So you solve for r, and you get r equals the cube root of 10 over pi. And we make a sign chart for, uh, for, for c prime. Uh, you pick a number between 0 and the cube root of 10 over pi, into uh, c prime. You can see this is going to be negative on top. And you pick a number greater than the cube root of 10 over pi. You can see it's going to be positive. 
So you have a local minimum at the cube root of 10 over pi. Now, also, since there's no other critical numbers, you can say it's an absolute minimum. Now, the answer to the question, but you've got to find h. That's kind of a pain. h is this, right here, 100 over pi r squared. So when you plug in cube root of 10 over pi in for h and simplify it, you get 100 to the 2 thirds over h to the 1 third. So those are the dimensions that minimize the cost. All right, let's keep on going. Here's one you have. Um, you're, you're taking a sphere of radius r, and you're asking yourself, what is the biggest cone that I can inscribe inside of that? That means that it's inside of it and it's touching. And you understand something. That there's, there's lots of ways that you can put a, a, a cone inside of a sphere. If you had a long, narrow cone, then h would almost equal 2r, wouldn't it? Twice the radius. Or you could have a, a short cone. Now, the short cone would look kind of like this. The thing about the short cone is, uh, wouldn't h and r both almost be zero? Anyway, so there's, lo there's lots of ways to do it. All right, so the function that I'm, now don't get, get confused. Capital R is the radius of the sphere, and that's fixed. Little r and little h are the dimensions of the cone, and those are the things that are changing. That's what we want to find the maximum value of. The constraint equation is the tricky part. Here's how you figure that out. See this little right triangle right here? This distance from here to here is little r. This whole distance from here to here is h. But from the center to the bottom is capital R, the, the radius of the sphere. So this distance right here is, is h, little h minus big R. Furthermore, this is the center of the sphere, this is the edge, so this, this distance right here is capital R. So you can use the good old Pythagorean theorem on that and get that um, little r squared plus h minus r quantity squared equals big R squared. That's your constraint E equation. This is one of those times when it's actually better to solve for r squared. See, see right there, you can actually plug in for r squared, it makes it easier. So if you just solve for r squared and simplify this, you get that r squared equals 2 little h big r minus h squared. When you plug that into the um, volume of the cone, you get this, and then we can break it up and, and look at it this way. Notice, th th this is a closed interval problem. H, h can be 0. In fact, if you go back to the constraint equation, if h equals 0, then r equals 0. And the biggest that h can be is 2r. Notice, if h equals 2r, then this becomes r squared. And this whole thing becomes r squared, so a little r would also be 0 there. But it's, it's, it's possible. So use the closed interval method. You um, take the derivative of v, take the derivative of v and set it equal to 0. And then if you factor it, you get h equals 0 or h equals 4r over 3. We can use the closed interval method. And then... Uh, you look at v of 0, v of 2r, v of 4 pi over 4 r over 3, and this turns out to be the absolute max. And this is the answer to the question. The question was, what is the max maximum volume? This is your answer right here. All right, one more here. This one, uh, <clears throat> you're, you're designing a poster, okay? And the, the area of the printed, uh, the, the printed area has to be 50 inches. So let's, 50 square inches. Let's let w be the width of the printed area. Let's let L be the length of the printed area. So W times L is 50. Furthermore, you, ha you have 2 inches on each, each side. So this distance here is going to be W plus 4. And you also have 4 inches on the top and bottom. So this entire distance here is L plus 8. The question is, how should the, what size should the paper be, the entire piece of paper, that would min minimize the amount of paper used? So this is the function that we're going to minimize L plus 8 times W plus 4. The constraint equation, like I said, was W times L equals 50. So if you solve for L, you get 50 over W. Plug it into A, you get this. When you multiply it out and, and simplify, you get this. Now again, notice, this is going to be an open interval problem because clearly W cannot equal 0. There's also no biggest value allowable, so we're going to have to use the first derivative test. Fortunately, it's not too hard. You take the derivative of A, and you get 8 minus 200 over w squared, when you get the common denominator, the reason why I do that is because is when you set it equal to 0, you just have to look at the num numerator. If you set the numerator equal to 0, you get w equals 5, since we know w is greater than 0. Do a little sign chart there, you get that you have a local minimum at w equals 5, and then it's, it, the reason why it's an ab absolute minimum is because there's no other critical numbers. L is 50 over w, so if w is 5, L is 10, and then you, remember, the, 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 the dimensions are going to be L plus 8, which is 18, times w plus 4, which is 9. Okay, we'll see you later. Bye-bye.